want your Lord to say? What do you want your Lord to say? Well done, good and faithful servant, in the joy of the Lord. Oh, what do you want your Lord to say? What do you want your Lord to say? I want to say, well done, good and faithful servant, in the joy of the Lord. Oh, what do you want your Lord to Faithful servant, enter in the joy of the Lord. Tell me, what do you want your Lord to say? What do you want your Lord to say? I want to say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter in the joy of the Lord. I want to love like I want my Lord to say. Love like I want my Lord to say. Well, it's well done, good and faithful servant. It are in the joy of the Lord. I want to live like I want my Lord to say. Live like I want my Lord to say. I want to say, well done, good and faithful servant. It are in the joy of the Lord. What do you want your Lord to say? Oh, what do you want your Lord to say? I want to say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter in the joy of the Lord. Live like you want your Lord to say. Live like you want your Lord to say. Well done, good and faithful servant. It are in the joy of the Lord. Pray like you want your Lord to say. Pray like you want your Lord to say. I want to say, well done, good and faithful servant. It are in the joy of the Lord. I want to live like I want my Lord to say. Live like I want my Lord to say. Why oh, is well done, good and faithful servant, in the joy of the Lord. I gotta love like I want my Lord to say. Love like I want my Lord to say. Well done, good and faithful servant, in the joy of the Lord. I'm gonna pray like I want my Lord to say. Pray like I want my Lord to say. I want to say, well done, good and faithful servant. In the joy of the Lord, I'm gonna live like I want my Lord to say. Live like I want my Lord to say. I want to say, well done, good and faithful servant. In the joy of the Lord. What do you want your Lord to say? Tell me what do you want your Lord to say? Well done, good and faithful servant, it are in the joy of the Lord. Pray like you want your Lord to say. Pray like you want your Lord to say. Well done, good and faithful servant. It are in the joy of the Lord. Preach like you want your Lord to say. Preach like you want your Lord to say. I want to say, well done, good and faithful servant. It are in the joy of the Lord. I'm going to live like I want my Lord to say. Live like I want my Lord to say. I want to say, well done. Good and faithful servant, enter in the joy of the Lord. Pray like you want your Lord to say. Pray like you want your 
pray like you want your Lord to say. Well done. Good and faithful servant. Enter in the joy of the Lord. Oh, like you want your Lord to say. Live like you want your Lord to say. I want to say, well done. Good and faithful servant. Enter in the joy of the Lord. I'm going to pray like I want my Lord to say. Pray like I want my Lord to say. I want to say, well done. Pray for serve uh, in, uh, in the joy of the Lord. Oh, pray like you want your Lord to say. Pray like you want your Lord to say. Well done. Good and faithful servant, uh, in her in the joy of the Lord. Oh, yes, I got it. Everlasting life. 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 Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Jesus gave it. Jesus gave it. Woo! Jesus higher. Jesus gave it. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Woo! Yes, I got it. Yeah, yeah. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Come on and put your hand together. Hey, 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 yeah.
Yes, I got it. Everlasting life. Yes, I got it. You can have it. Believe on him. Believe in Jesus. Live for Jesus. Do for Jesus. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you want your Lord to say? What do you want your Lord to say? Well done, good and faithful servant, enter in the joy of the Lord. Oh, what do you want your Lord to say? What do you want your Lord to say? Well done, good and faithful servant, enter in the joy of the Lord. die anymore as believers that we pass from death to life so when we leave these earthly tabernacles when we open our eyes again we are in the presence of the beatified God and that's what I trust that he's in now and I thank you that because he's there God has sent some help in here 
that's going to take us through this time of celebration and memorial. Today we're going to follow the program as the family has laid it out. We're going to begin with a musical by Dr. Lazare D. Reese of Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church of Atlanta, Georgia. That will be followed by scripture readings by Prophetess A. R. Gerald, Old Testament and New Testament. And then we will have the prayer of comfort by Evangelist Debbie Sexton. We pray that everyone please follow that order of service and keep God in mind. Amen. I will keep you in perfect peace. All who's mine stayed on me. I will keep you.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. For the word of God said, let everything that have breath. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We know what time it is, but we yet give God glory. As I was sitting there and reminding myself just a few weeks ago, glory to God, I was taking the same seat. Losing my husband. Glory to God. All right. But God is yet a good God. Yes, he is. And I will say to the family today, look up. Yes. For God is who he is. Yes, he is. For he is Alpha and Omega. And he is the beginning and the end. Yes. And at this time, I'm going to read for you. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. Yes. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to moan and a time to dance, glory to God. A time to shatter stones, and a time to gather them. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain. A time to search, and a time to give up. A time to keep, and a time to throw away. A time to tear, and a time to mend. A time to be silent, and a time to speak. A time to love, a time to hate. A time for war, and a time for peace. Glory to God. I read for you Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, which is the Old Testament. I'm going to the New Testament. Glory to God. Going to St. John. Glory to God. 14th chapter. Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. That you also may be where I am. Glory to God. It's not so easy as we may think or feel. But I say to you, as the Lord said, as the word of God said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Be encouraged, family. Know that this is God's plan. And one day we'll go the same way. So know that from the Gerald family. Glory to God. We love you and be blessed. Dear merciful and eternal God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for although we have come together to celebrate the life of Brother Douglas Eugene Clark, we first must give you the proper honor. Lord, we glorify you. We thank you, God, for being God. We thank you, Lord, for being who you are. 
Lord, nothing has escaped your notice. Lord, we know and we realize that you see the heavy hearts today, God, but you're still good. We thank you, Lord, for loaning Brother Douglas Clark to this family, Lord. And even though this sad hour has come, Lord, heaven is still rejoicing. Lord, we have learned throughout the years and in your word, dear God, that we have to rejoice in the good times and in the bad times because you're still good. And Lord, it is this day that we, we pray that these, your children, Lord, will open up their hearts, dear God, and let you do what you do best. You are God and above you, Lord, there is none other. Lord, you said, let not your heart be troubled. For even in the troubled times, God, you're still good. Lord, even in the darkest hour, you are still good. Lord, even in the lonesome hours, you are still good. You are God no matter what. You're God all by yourself, God. And you don't need nobody else. Lord, we just thank you for being who you are. We thank you, Lord, that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, for loaning this gentle giant to these your people, dear God. Lord, we know that everything starts with you and everything ends with you if we live that life of obedience, dear God. Lord, we pray that you will comfort the hearts of these your people. Lord, it is my prayer that in their weakest hour, oh God, that's when they will find, Lord, you to be mighty and strong. Lord, we pray that they will open up their hearts today, God, and allow you to come in and comfort their hearts, dear God. Oh, Father, you did not leave us comfortless. The Holy Spirit desires to come in and sup with these, your people. Oh, God, we just thank you for being God. We thank you for your love, your kindness, and the mercy that you have shown toward us. Oh, Father, this is just the dressing up room. Father, we realize that a day will come where we will desire, oh God, to hear servant, well done. Oh, Father, if we would just live the life that Christ died to give us and realize, Lord, that that life only comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh, Father, come on in to this service today, God. Let this be a day of celebration. Let us look to the hills from which cometh our help and realize that all of our help cometh from you, Lord, who made heaven and earth. Oh, God, you're still good. And because you are God, we give you the praise, we give you the honor, and we give you the glory. Have your way today, God in us, through us, and all around us. Be in the preach word, oh God. Comfort these, your people, oh God. Oh Father, we'll be so careful to give your name the glory that you are richly and rightfully deserving of. It's in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, we ask these blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. To God be the glory for the things he has done, he is doing, and will continue to do throughout this day and the rest of our lives. We go into this portion of the script of the program for remarks. We pray that we would honor the requests of the family to keep our remarks to two minutes, please. So anyone today who desires to share remarks regarding this great man, you can come in order. Thank you. My daddy was my complete world. We had a very special relationship. There's not enough words in a dictionary 
to describe the love that I have for you. I hold two vivid memories of you from childhood that I will never forget. One day I was riding along with you. You were speeding in your black Trans Am. The police pulled you over. I remember the police officer walking up to the car. I was crying uncontrollably because I thought that you were going to jail that day. I only to find out that the police officer was just your friend and he was only saying hi. Secondly, you nearly killed the two of us by speeding across the railroad tracks in the attempt to beat the train. You told me to hold on and I firmly gripped my seatbelt for dear life. I remember the loud horn of the train and the extremely bright lights. We barely escaped. You threatened me with my mom, but you threatened me and you told me to never tell my mama. I obeyed and never mentioned it. You threatened me with saying that if mama knew, she would never let you see me again if she knew what you did. And I'm sure that you were right. We often laughed and joked about this top secret CIA joke. We often spoke on the phone and never ended our conversations without saying I love you. I would never forget you. My heart will always beat for you. On the day that God called you home, I whispered sweet nothings in your ear. I held your hand and I softly said to you, Daddy, you've been the best daddy to me that a girl could ever ask for. I would cherish you in my heart forever. Thank your sweet breast, Daddy. I will be okay. I gently kiss your forehead and continue to talk with you. My world has changed. Without you in it, it will never remain the same. Your suffering is no more. You have earned your wings. I now have a guardian angel that will always be watching over me. I will miss us joking and laughing together, as we often did. Daddy, I will miss you terribly. You peacefully flew home like beautiful white doves from above. My heart will forever hold a space for a daddy's love. Amen. Ooh, it's a hard day for me. But I just want to thank everybody who's out. I can't see all my friends over here, my family. I just want to say to my family, um, it's something about forgiveness. God said in this word that if you don't, how can you? This is hard, y'all. Anyway, we have to have forgiveness in our heart. And I know that my granddaddy was not a perfect man. He tried. We're not perfect either. And we just got to ask God to help us to understand things that we don't understand. But I just want to encourage my family that we have to forgive one another, forgive ourselves and just continue to love on one another. That's all we can do. Good morning, family. 
First, I want to say I give God honor for being head of my life. This is my family. Some may know me, some may not. My cousin Douglas, I can relate to Keisha with the fast driving, but my cousin Douglas, he would always come to Florida where I live. That's where my mom, my auntie, Aunt Tiny, her sister, my mother lived. And he would come and he would visit us. So it was so many good memories of him. But the most important memories are the real memories that I showed enough have of him when he come to Florida. I'm from Ocala. So when he would come, all the girls, when I say all the girls, when they saw him, they instantly drew to him. So he was an eye catcher in my town. But he was one of my best friends because he was my big cousin. And when I would come to auntie, go to auntie house, Aunt Tiny, it's so many beautiful memories with him driving me in his car or even Leon, my God, would drive me in his car. And I thought that that was just the best thing, being a little girl, that we can get in these nice cars and ride. And then Lisa, who's going to take me to get some ice cream. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just standing up here to just say that I'm touching and agreeing with what his grandson said, that we are family, and we all we have. So if there is, I don't know, any ill feelings, let it go. Whatever he did, God got him now. But we are still here, and we're going to be here one day. And when we be here, we want to hear God say when we get to him, job well done. So in order for him to say that, our hearts have to be pure. If we say that we are children of God, then we got to love like him because that's what he does. And I don't want to go over my two minutes. I'm going to get out of the way. But I just want my family to know from me that I love you guys. I love everybody. And just hold that. Y'all hold on to that. And just know that we're family. My last auntie left. It's the last one, the last of the Clarks. Auntie, if I just ask God, all I want him to do is just give me and let me be for it tough like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, and to God be the glory. Would the Willie Watkins family please stand? To the Clark family, always remember, you are braver than you believe. You are stronger than it seems, and you're wiser than you think. And just know that you are truly, truly loved. I am Leola Hatcher, I'm the relations manager for Willie A. Watkins, and on behalf of Mr. Willie A. Watkins and the staff of Willie A. Watkins, we want this family to know that we love you and beyond the tears, we will always be there for you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Does anyone else want to make remarks before we move on? in this celebration. Amen. Amen. We'll now have a video montage. Good morning, everybody. I would like to say. 
said to my family, the club, to my, my brother, first cousin, Douglas Kildren, some of them I haven't seen, I don't know them, that I love you all, y'all beautiful children, just like y'all daddy. Beautiful kids. But I just want to say just a little bit about Douglas. I call him Doug because uh, my mama raised him from a baby till he got a teenager and his mama got him back, which is my last auntie, like my first cousin said. And Tiny, that's my heart, y'all. That lady was a good mother and she still lives. And she my role model. And she was a fine lady, and she still is a fine lady in her younger days. But y'all talking about a beautiful grandmama, fine shape, she had it. I don't know what done happened to us now, so when, as of me, coming up as a, a child, I wanted to be just like my Aunt Tiny. But I thank God I love her, and she's still here with us, and she's 90. She will be 95 next month, and she's still here with us. And I want to say about a little about Duck now. As little children coming up, Duck and I, and several more mama's children, we would get out in the back of then in the home house. It was a great big old house with a big old tree in the middle of the front yard, I'm thinking. And we would, you know how, Mama and them used to get the potato patch and they dig it like a, a hump and then they got a hole up in there and you put the sweet potatoes in there and, and pull them out when you get ready. So me and Duck used to, I would put my foot up in the sand bed and Duck would make a, a, a toss, a, a pallet over my foot and sprinkle a little water where I can, when I pull my foot out, it'll stay. And so one day we were there talking and then I'm finna go. We were talking about the different little thing, Duck. And I said, Duck, we said, Duck, Oh, he duck was funny. He always was funny. I said, Duck, if the house catch a fire, what would you do? <laughs> Lord have mercy, Duck said. He loved it. He had a special yellow nylon shirt. Duck said, I get my yellow nylon shirt, and I'd be going, all I want is my yellow nylon shirt, Duck. <laughs> And I'm gonna miss Douglas, I'm gonna miss him. He, I ain't gonna cry, he, um, I saw him about three months ago, two months, two months ago, coming from the IGA. He, he had a, a, a probate where he had got some box, because with my other auntie, we lost her, and uh, bringing the boxes to her at Shirley's house. And I waved at him, I said, hey, boy, you still looking good. You are handsome yourself. And he smiled and put his head up, and that's the last time I seen him. But I love him, and he was a good person. And just like the young man said, none of us perfect. And we might say we is, but the Bible said no one perfect but the Father. Before the montage, is someone else coming? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Lachey. Um, I was debating on if I was going to come up here and say something. Um, I never actually got to speak to my grandfather um, yesterday at his wake. That was my first time seeing him. Um, 
I didn't know what to expect or what to feel when I got here today. I still don't really know. I think it'll take some time for me to fully understand how I feel about all of this. Um, but what I do know is it feels so good to see people who look like me. Um, growing up, I had a really hard childhood and life, and I don't look like my maternal side of the family. So when I look out at you guys and I see my face, feels good and it brings me comfort in this time. Um, I really wish I would have at least just got to see him. I really did want to see him and meet him. Um, it's, this is a lot, you know, I'm so happy that I got, I'm getting to meet you guys today and I look forward to building relationships with you all. And just like Justin said, we do have to forgive my family is not perfect. I come from a crazy life, and I've had to forgive people. You can't walk around with hardness in your heart. That's not of God. Forgiveness does not mean forget. You don't have to let people hurt you again. You can put up boundaries, but you do have to forgive. Um, so I just want to say that I love you guys, and I look forward to getting to know you all. And I hate that this had to be the way that I met you all, but I look forward to building a relationship. and. Well, it feels good to know that that's generational because we all are very attractive and I know we all have people coming after us and I, I'm i like, I called my dad a couple months ago and I was like, do you have a problem with this? Like, people are always staring. Like, why is it like this? Like, I'm, I'm it's annoying. So it's good to know that that comes from a long line. Um, but I don't really have much to say. I just wish that I could have met him and I'm happy that I have you all now and I want to stay in contact and I love you guys. Amen. Before the montage, we're going to have a musical selection. Amen.
give God praise in this house. If you believe our God is excellent, come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How many of you know our God is excellent? He never fails. He never messes up. He gets everything right. God be the glory. I wish I had somebody who knew him, who knew him. To God be the glory for the things he has done. That blessed my soul. You just can't sit down on something like that. Hallelujah. The old saints said when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Some say, well, that ain't in the Bible. I say, I think it is. The Bible said, be not deceived. God is not mine. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. And so if you can sow praises, you can reap blessings. David said it this way, I'll bless the Lord at all times. I wish I had somebody who ain't sometime. Man. I bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. It's the in season and out of season. I know I don't feel like it, but I'm going to give it glory. Because I walk by faith and not by sight. It don't matter what I feel about when God say bless him, I'm going to bless him. God say give him glory, I'm going to give him glory. Tell somebody it'll be better later, but I'm going to bless him right now. Hallelujah. Our God is excellent. See, you've got to know how to put the devil on the run. you got to know how to get the devil out your business. Hallelujah. Let God arise. If you want to get the devil out, just stop praising God. Yeah, and all of your enemies will be scattered. It's an amazing thing. When we give God praise, oh, the psalmist said that men would just bless me. Oh, and men would just give me praise for the wondrous works that I've done for them. Y'all almost make me think we in church. Amen, amen. Are we ready yet? Now we'll have the video montage. Amen. is worthy ah. to be praised. All I can say is, Lord, you're my everything. Praise waiteth for thee.
to us in music.
Because the Lord is my shepherd.
Jesus loving Never to try to preach over the Holy Ghost. Whenever God's moving, it's best for you to just be still and know He is God. How many believe today that our God is an awesome God who reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love? Our God is an awesome God, and He's able to do just not enough, but He can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ever ask, think, dream or even imagine our God is able. And sometimes when we don't know what to do, it's good to know that our God does. Job said it's the breath of the Almighty that has given us life. And I'm going to wait until my change comes. Isaiah said, wait on the Lord and be of a good courage, and he will strengthen thine heart. David said, wait, I say. Oh, the Lord. Grandma told me he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Can anybody bless that wonderful name of Jesus? I'm trying to be cute, y'all, but can you bless that wonderful name of the Lord? Because I'm, I'm uh, Justin knows I'm really, I'm really, I'm really saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. I know that, I know that's not popular, but I am. We used to sing old song in the church. I love Jesus. He's my savior. When storms are raging, he'll be my shelter. Whatever he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus, and he loves me. And we'll slip down out and say, I love him better every day. Walk by my side. Quit, quit, quit. I'm here today, I'm here today, privileged and honored to be in this place for my friend. He called and told me the occasion, the schedule got cleared for you. I'm, no, I'm not bragging, but I am a busy man, but for my friend. I came today, and I came and I prayed just to honor this great man to honor this family, to do no ill service. I just want to be a blessing to you on today. And in the brevity of time, I want to share some eulogistic words from the only place I know to look, and that's the word of God. I don't preach comic books. I don't do CNN or Fox. Hallelujah. I, 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 just, I just proclaim the whole council of God. It's, it, it's kept me for these almost 60 years. I believe it's able to keep you also. First Samuel is where we'll go at on today to all the ministers of the gospel and all of those who are in your respective places to the staff of Willie Watkins Funeral Home, which I call my second family. I bless God for you on this day to the pastor who is not here today but in honor and reverence allowing us to worship in this sacred place we call sanctuary. We bless God for the head of the house. My mom always told me, speak when you go into another person's house. So I want to say good evening, y'all. And to the ones who we most regard on today in this lovely family, 
we have all, if you have not, keep living, sat in that seat before. That's not an envy place to be sitting in. It's one thing when you are encouraging somebody who's there, but it's another thing when you're the one that's sitting in that seat. It's hard to muster. It's not no, no knock on anyone. It's hard to muster praise even in that place. But you got to know in your heart that God is still God. Hallelujah. And he's still in control. The devil will make you think sometimes that he's doing what he want to do, but the devil is a new liar. And as my mama would say, his foot stank. God is still God. The whole of Israel, the Lord thy God is one, and besides him, there is. Yeah, there's no God conference. We serve the one and true God, Yahweh. He is the God that's in control. And every night, he'll throw his weight around if you may. He'll let the devil know just who he is going. And we pray today that he would shine on this service on today. I do have a word from the Lord, and it's not long. We're not going to hold you long. I know the time is passing. But would you look with me in the book of 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. A strange place I would have thought that God would take me <clears throat> for a home going, but I'm going to go with God. Verse number one, very familiar passage of scripture, I would think, for those who, for the Bible readers who are here. Verse one says, and David and his men reached Ziglag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziglag. They had attacked Ziglag and burned it and had taken captive the woman and all who were in it, both young and old. They killed none of them but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men came to Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire and the wives and the sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives had been captured, a handium of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David, uh -huh. yeah. I need some Davids here today. But David found strength in the Lord his God. And when David said to Abathar, the priest, the son of the Amalekite, bring me the, the ephod. Abathar brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. I'm reading from the NIV version of the Bible. But I want to take, take my text. If we look at verse number six, and David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength, and King James says, encourage himself in the Lord of God. But David found strength. And I want to tag this text with this title this morning, Finding Strength to Keep Going. Finding Strength to Keep Going. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to stand in this sacred place, to minister to these your sheep today, God. God becomes God standing, making up the hedge. God standing in the gap for this family and friends. Father, we pray the prayer of Isaiah today, God, that you will anoint their hoid with oil today. Give them the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. Give them the all of joy for the, for the spirit of mourning today, God. Give them beauty for their ashes on today. Heal broken hearts in this place. Bind up every wound today, God. Rebuke the spirit of depression and oppression, God. Will you say that in your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are presence forevermore. For we declare that the joy of the Lord is 
our strength. Strengthen those who are weak and heavy laden today, God. Give them sweet rest in this place on today. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to be so kind to just cascade this service. Do something special for the devil. Cast him out of him right now. God, bring this family together, God. Let them gel and be cohesive, God, with the bounds of love from heart to heart and breast to breast, God. God, let there be a perfect unity where you can command the blessing over this house today. So, Father, we thank you in advance. I ask you, God, as your preacher, to think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. Let it be none of me and all of you, and you get all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And it's in the name, the only name that we know that has resurrection power. And that's the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Can I need two, two or three believers to say, oh, God, amen. amen. Come on and bless the Lord if you love him. Hallelujah. That's all right for me. Come on, let's give God a better praise. Glory to God. It's something I do that's customary when I minister in homegoing celebration. And I have not yet done today. But for the life that we come to honor and to celebrate on today, the Bible says, He that ruleth well is worthy of double honor. And just for a moment, if you don't mind, since we came to celebrate him, can we give God praise? Can we give God a double praise, a heaping, happy helping of glory for this man of God that we're celebrating on today? Somebody might want to stand and give him a standing ovation. He's a good father. He was a good friend. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord for the life. Come on, that, come on, Eklund, that's you laying out over there. Everybody's got to come this way. Do unto others as you wanted to done unto you. Come on and bless God for his life. Amen, amen, amen. It's something you can sit down. It's a, a trap many ministers fall into when they do uh, eulogies. They, they, they attempt to do something that can't be done. And that is to try to put people in heaven. And some try to stone them down to hell. But they, I've learned something. The life you live speaks for you and, and, and Paul said it this way I've, I've already fought my fight I've kept my faith and now it's been laid up for me a crown the righteous one has already got he's already transitioned because the Bible says in the moment he was absent from his body he was present with the Lord and we come to celebrate his life but this message is not for this man of God but it's for those who remain and I know after we eat the fried chicken and the macaroni and cheese at the repast and all the phone stop, calls stop coming and, and nobody's visiting, getting no texts, no Snapchats, no emails, it's a lonely time. And, it, and, 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 and this message may not mean nothing. Else. Just go ahead and file it in your card catalog. But you're going to have some days that you're going to need some strength to go on. <laughs> it's something like grief comes in waves. Some days are better than other days. But it's good to know you got something hid in the chambers of your heart that when this enemy comes, God can lift up a standard against him and tell the devil, you ain't getting no place in here. The joy of the Lord is still my strength. And as we look at this text on today, if you would, just travel with me for a few moments. Loss is one of the most devastating issues. It gives no rule. There's no rule that it give you to handle loss. There's no plan, there's no plan, that, there's no strategy that you can find that you can go online and get from Google. There, there's nothing that they tell you or prepare you when you lose something. It affects everyone differently, and that's why people got to be so careful to judge somebody else when they lose something. They have a tendency to tell people that's too much. Now, that's, come on, you're going over, but hold up, baby, you ain't lost, that, this is not your loss. It didn't mean to you what it meant to me. Loss is painful. Loss is sad. There are emotions. I'm sorry to tell you, everybody ain't the rock of Gibraltar. Loss comes with some baggage called emotions. <laughs> and many times you, will, you wonder who your friend is. You'll know them when you lose something. Because I know you can handle my gifts, but can you handle my baggage? Before you go pick a spouse, you better make sure they can carry your bags. Glory to God. Because you're going to find in life you're going to have more bags than blessings. And although no one is immune or exempt from loss, it is still inevitable as long as we are alive. 
And in this journey as believers in faith, you, as, as saved as you are and as sanctified as you are, and, and as many times you fast, you fast six days out of seven, and that's wonderful. But I'm just sad to give you some news. You still will encounter loss. The Bible said it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. I don't care how much you jog. I don't care how much vitamins you take. You going to lose in life. I wish I had somebody that would help me sermonize this text on today. Loss is not a stranger to mankind. It seems while we get struck in amazement when the, uh, the band is broken, but loss is no stranger to mankind. Uh, you, you, We have all in some form or fashion experienced some form of loss. We have lost friendships. Well, some of us has lost businesses. We have lost joy. And today we come to celebrate the loss of a loved one. Lost, though it's unique. However, there is a word from the Lord that tells us and assures us that not all is lost. Uh -huh. Oh my God. Hallelujah. The connotation of loss is if it's lost, you don't know where it's at. Right. But when you, when you, when you, can I pull up for a minute while the engine running? If you die in the Lord, you ain't lost. I know exactly where you are. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. We, would, we declare our, big, our brother today is not lost. He's at the presence of Jesus. So, so Pastor, come on, come, come on, speed to the end now. The chicken is warming up. How do we keep going when we feel all is lost? How do we keep going? I, I, I know this is hard, but we've got to live after this. <laughs> I, I know, I know, but everybody, the world didn't stop when we lost something. You have to get to a place in your walk with God that you can stand resolute in your faith and believe that God can keep you. I want to say this, this don't sound real fancy and popular, but you've got to be in a place with God that you can believe that God can keep you. I'll say that one more time because y'all didn't get it on this side. You got to be so fixed in your faith that you got to understand even though you can't keep yourself. When your mind looks like he's about to run out the door while you're sitting in the chair, you got to believe that God is able to keep you. Hallelujah. How many know he is a keeper? He is. I, I, oh, I thank you so much. He is a keeper in times uh, like these we need a savior people wonder why you so why you always going to church Justin why you always in church every time I look you want to go to somebody's church but now he's trying to tell you family this is why I have to go to church it's hallelujah so it's not it's, it's not it's not so much about what I, I, I'm going to do but what I don't want to do because this is when you need a savior Ah, this is when you need a friend. Uh, the old song said, what a friend we have in Jesus. Y'all about to qu quit now, quit now. All my griefs and pains to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Anybody know Jesus is a friend that sticketh closer than any brother? Oh, y'all about to make me have church. The Bible says here in this text, David found strength. David found strength. It, 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 it gives us the connotation that strength is not necessarily going to be evident when you go through situations. That strength is not something that's going to be immediately apparent when you're in trouble. And, 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 it's, and, and it's true to life that when you're going through, you're going to have to start looking for some stuff you didn't think you would have to look for. When, Anybody ever going through something and every time you, you, you were there for everybody else, but when you went through your going through, you had to go look for a friend? I, I don't know why life is this way, but he says in this text that you're going to have to look for it. He found strength in God, in God alone. David, David, the Bible says in verse number three, David strengthened or encouraged himself in the Lord. That lets you know that finding strength in a group activity. 
I know you want to go out with the boys. I know you, 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 your girlfriend want to ride around town. But, but you can be in the car with somebody and still be lonely. You, you, can still, you can have all the, your family and friends all around you. And you can still feel weak as the day is long. But when you, when you really want strength, you're going to have to learn how to go to God for yourself. I know there are certain things we, we want to do as parents for our children, but we find that as they grow and mature, you say, baby, it was a time when daddy and mama could get that for you, but now you're on your own, and now you got to know how to call on the name of the Lord. Oh, I'm telling you, college was a blessing for me, not because it gave me a degree. College taught me how to call on the name of Jesus. When I couldn't get to mama and I couldn't get to daddy, but I know there was a friend that sticketh closer than any brother. And hard times and trouble will bring you to a place where you're going to have to learn how to suffer. You're going to have to learn how to pray. You've got to know how to find God for yourself. He, I believe that this text teaches us that when you have a lack of external support, God will supply internal strength. Let me say it again. When, when your friends forsake you and your family walks out on you, you got nobody to, where do I go? When there's no one there to talk to, who do I lean on? <laughs> when there's no foundation stable, uh, I go to the rock. My God is able. I go, I go to the rock. You've got to find that strength is a, is a commodity that's internalized in individuals. You, you're not strong because you got a big number with you. You're strong because you got a big one in you. We call this strength fortitude. God, God gives us intestinal fortitude. That means if you walk away, baby, I'm still good. If everybody forsake me, I'm going to make it. <laughs> Hallelujah. God said, you got to learn, and life allows us to go through situations so we can tap in to who we are. Let's hurry up. And all around David, David has 600 men around him. 600 men that I believe he called family. Oh, song, they say, we are family. <laughs> got all my sisters and me. You, yo, yo, that's a good old Baptist song. Y'all didn't get that. <laughs> had his family around him. 600 men, 600 men that came to him when they were down and out. And I want, I want, I want, I want, I want to mention that for a moment because, see, sometimes we can get hurt. And our feelings can be devastated because the people you thought should be closest to you. When people are going through something, they will forget everything you ever done for them. Because pain is selfish. When, when you're hurting, they say, I heard this thing say, hurt people, hurt people. And these 600 men were the same 600 men now that when they were kicked out of the kingdom by Saul, the evil king, who did they run to in their time of need? They went to the cave of Adullam and they found David in a cave. And David helped them when he went through their go through. And, and David strengthened them. They became David's mighty men. And now who in the world would have ever thought that they would now be thinking about stoning the same man that paid your rent last month the same man that when nobody else ain't want to help you helped you it's amazing it's amazing how people can hold stuff against you and that's the same person that know all your dirt and still help you it's amazing it's amazing and David was surrounded by a company of people who wanted to get rid of him y'all ain't never had none of y'all like but even in the midst of their suffering even though they lost faith in David, the Bible still says all was still not lost. Uh -huh. See, when you begin to focus on what you're going through, as many of us do when we go through loss, you're going to cry, you're gonna, and, and that's natural. You're going to grieve. That's, that's natural. This is a part of the grieving process. But you can grieve so much to all your strength. I don't know. I may be talking to one person here today that you that the end is still. I, I, I see what I'm saying. I don't even have no more strength to cry. People looking at you. You don't understand. This is broken me down like a fraction, and all 
up my strength and go. And that's what the enemy wants you to believe. That you ain't got nothing else. But this text keeps saying, tell them, tell them today, all ain't lost. I I know we're looking at this man of God before us today and we feel we've lost someone precious than you did. But, But God says, there's still something left. Hallelujah. David went before God. And I'm going to wrap this thing up. David went before God and began to encourage himself in the Lord. David had church all by himself in the closet. David started blessing the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within him. He began to bless his name. And as he began to inquire, as he began to seek the face of God, the Bible said, ask of me and I will show you great and mighty things that you know you didn't know that you still got some blessings uh, that have been waiting for you. There's some stuff you ain't that you have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has entered the hearts of men. God got some stuff stashed for you for times like these. When he knew you were going to see this day, God said, all is not lost. When David began to inquire of the Lord, he said, God, I thought I lost. He said, no, you ain't lost everything. No, he says, no, baby, there's some stuff still waiting for you. And God begins to give David his instruction. He tells David, say, David, now I need you to pursue. I need you to go get it. I know it don't feel right, but you got to go get your strength back. You got to go get your joy back. You got to go get your peace back. He said, David, said, David, no, it ain't lost, baby. There's some things that God has stored up for you, but you can't sit where you are. You've got to get up and you got to get your get back, baby. You got to get your joy back. You got to get your peace back. Somebody got to go in the course and say, devil, I want it back. I know I lost my daddy, but I want my happiness back. I know I lost my family member, but I want my joy back. Tell somebody I'm getting it back today. I'm getting Tells him at that moment when he decided all is not lost. You, you got to make a decision today. I got to live past this. Thank God for encouragement. Thank God for praise. But in our lives that we live, we got to get to a place. We got to go beyond praise. Uh, it would be it would be all right to praise and stop if the Bible stopped there, but it didn't stop there. After David encouraged himself with the Lord, now God said, go get it back. Hallelujah. What is the place beyond encouragement? That's where you got to get up and do something. That's where you got to get up and say something. The mornings you're going to get in the bed you don't even want to get out of your bed. You got to say, I'm going to get it back today. This is the day the Lord. Come on, come on, help anybody. You got to get up and say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Some days you got to go get it back. You got to get your get back, baby. God has blessed you to enjoy this life, but you're going to have to live after this. I know it hurt, but you're going to have to live after this. And God asks David, but he asks as many of us that immortal question. What do you have left? That's a tricky question. What? I, I know I know you lost this, but, but tell me what you got left. Because I'm going I'm to use what you got left to get what you want. Y'all ain't hear me. This, I said this was a crazy text. He, God never asks anything of you that you don't have. He asked the woman, he says, he said, what do you have in your house? I got a little, I got a little meal. And little, I need some country cooks up in here. But y'all, y'all don't know how to eat right here. If you, if you, you, you ain't got to go to the store. Tell me what you got in the cabinet. Uh, There's that, a miracle in your cabinet. You just don't know what to do with it. He says, "What? He said, what do you have left?" And the text goes on, and I don't have time to go there. And around that twelfth verse, he says, "I got some bread. I got some water. I got a fig cake." And I got a cluster of raisins. Y'all can read that when you get home. Now, this just didn't make no sense. I never went and dug in this text like that. He said, hold up. David had to use something to get what he wanted. If you're going to recover your joy, if you're going to recover your peace, if you're going to sleep after this, what's in your cupboard? Somebody said, y'all can't relate. What in the world can bread and water and fig cakes and clusters of raisins? Well, you don't know the Bible. 
The, the bread is the word of God. The water is the Holy Spirit. Come on now. The fig cake is symbolic of healing. <laughs> Glory to God. And the clusters of grapes or raisins is joy unceasable. And so what are you trying to say? I, I, need, I need somebody to help me mix this thing up in here. He said, take your bread, take your word, take your water, get your spirit, get your fig cake, get your healing back. Let God heal your broken heart. Let him bind up your wound. And then without all, get your joy. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. God says you're going to find happiness after this. I don't believe this man of God. And you say, what he wish? He wished that you be happy. For the rest of your life. He says, now what you do with what you got is going to determine what you get in your life. Now, is this is this bread? Is that is that for me? Is this water? That, that's for me right now. Now, this is the crazy part of it. This fig cake. I, I thought this was going to strengthen me. He, uh, these raisins, I know, I know, because I like raisin bran. I, I know that's for me. He said, no, 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 this is this, this, this how you get what you want. He says, now, take what you got and bless somebody else. What you trying to tell us? That there's somebody sitting right next to you that needs your bread. See, 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 we, 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 the key of getting past laws is giving. That don't, <laughs> hallelujah that, 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 if, if whenever you lose something you want to get it back give it away I know that don't make no sense I'm crying I'm hurting he said if you want to be loved if you want, you want a friend show yourself friend if you want love love on somebody else if you want to be confident, look over. There's somebody right there on your road who's crying right now. Instead of thinking about yourself, God said, when you give it away, you're going to get it back. Press down, shake it together, and running over. This is the day the Lord has made. And God said, how am I going to find strength? what he had and there was a little Egyptian man who was hurting who was left for dead he could have been said this bread for us we're going to eat our bread and keep going we already lost 200 men I can't give you none of my bread God said no 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 that's what I gave you to get what you lost back bless the little one man with a meal but he didn't know that one man he blessed was going to give him the key to get everything he lost. To everything he lost. God said, there's somebody right now that's hurting more than you. And God said, I know you think what you got is all. But God said, if you would take the time today and love somebody and forgive somebody and strengthen somebody, God said, you'd be surprised. I'm going to give it back to you. Let me tell you, I'm give it back. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. Somebody give God praise. Tell their neighbor, we're going to get it back. We're going to get it back. You're going to be all right. You're going to make it through this. I just want to strengthen you. I I just want to bless you. I pray for me. I'm gonna pray for you. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Let me, let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you will give your people the insight, the wherewithal to find strength to go on. Shall I call it quits? Or shall I go on? I believe today that your father, your grandfather, he said, no, baby, don't call it quit. I want you to live and not die. I want you to be blessed, and I want you to prosper. Father, we pray right now, lead and guide your people today into strength that they've never seen before. Bind up broken hearts, God. God, I share a simple word today, but God, let it be, have powerful, powerful results in this room. Because anything we do for God will last. We thank you for this word. We thank you for this family. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. We turn this portion of service 
over to the morticians. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Happy day. Oh, happy day. That song take me on that tell my age. That song been out a long time now. A long time. Oh, happy day. I just want to say this before I dive into the acknowledgement part of the, you know, um, my heart truly goes out um, to Justin. And it's a tough thing to be able to serve everybody and everybody here can tell you it's hard to allow people to serve us and there's a time that the bible tells about all these different seasons we got to go through time to laugh time to dance time to do all that. but it's a time that somebody need to serve us we don't have the strength that we put out every day 
So I want him to know and I want Keisha to know because they deal with this every day. They deal with families that's grieving every day and bereavement every day. That it's okay that you're not okay today. Because we need to know that you're not okay. Because you got a group of people wrapped around you right now, but you got everybody from Miss Hatcher, Miss Mitchell, Miss Phyllis. We got Kendall over here. We got Vash out here. We got our whole staff here. And what we're doing today, we are wrapping our loving arms around you and let you know that we truly do love you. You're not walking through this alone. You're walking through this. We all got your back. And I know some other family members here, but guess what? These are, these, these are my people. These are our people right here. And when they hurt and they're not well, we're not well. We're not well. So we want you to know that we love you. We appreciate you. I don't need to repeat what Ms. Hatcher has said. She came up and done an excellent job. But I want you to know, Justin, that you're part of us. And we got you. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I truly do. When you hurt, we hurt. When you're not well, we're not well. And the unique thing, and I'm going to let Savannah take over the acknowledgement part, because I'm going to be honest, I feel like I'm getting emotional about this. But last night, this lady, and I think she was on TikTok or something, and the lady said one thing. She said, when you're going through, praise your way out. When you need something from God, praise your way out of that. When you're in trouble, praise your way out. So family, I want to encourage you to praise your way out of this. Forget about everything that happened before this moment. Praise your way out of this. And you will see the good from today. We love you. I'm going to get Devitra to come, and after Devitra, we'll get Pastor Savannah Watkins to come, and he'll close it on out for me. Devitra. Um, to this family, you have my deepest condolences. And uh, to Justin, I certainly empathize um, heavily with what you're going through. Um, having to, in the same facility in September, and then back in the same facility in December to bury a grandfather and a grandmother, I totally get it. And so um, I would just encourage you to continue to trust God and continue to move forward. To Miss Keisha, on behalf of the Douglas County Board of Education, to the, the family of the late Mr. Douglas Eugene Clark, we extend to you and your family our deepest sympathy for the loss of your amazing family patriarch. On this blessed day, we are yielding not to our own understanding as we attempt to replace pain with gratitude. It is with great sympathy and reverence that we share with you as you bear this immense load. However, we know that Mr. Douglas Eugene Clark is resting peacefully with God. The Bible teaches us that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, and that those who believe in him will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in him will never die. Remember that death leaves a heartache that no one can heal, and love leaves a memory that no one can steal. To the entire Clark family, we pray your strength as you lean upon the memories of love, life, and past shared joys to lighten your load. If I could be of service of, in any way, please do not hesitate to reach out. Sign sincerely. Tracy Rooker, Chair of the Douglas County Board of Education. Devitra Ann Caldwell, Vice Chair of the Douglas County Board of Education. Amen. Come on, put our hands together. Let's bless God in this place. Oh, come on, make it just a little bit louder. Amen. We'll do give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the angel of this tabernacle in her absence. Let's give the man of God a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing with this family, for being here with this family. The family will have us to acknowledge at this time their heartfelt and sincere gratitude for all acts of kindness that you, the many family and friends, have expressed to them during this, their time of bereavement. They thank you for your calls, your cars, your floor tribute, whatever the part, the family says thank you. Even your presence here today served as a source of comfort to this family, for we have come to find out grief shared is grief bad. 
Thank you, family and friends, for helping this family to bear their grief in times like these. And on a personal note to Justin and to Keisha, who has worked with us as serving families, on behalf of Willie, my brother Willie, my brother Darrell, um, my nephew Darrell Jr., my niece um, Farris, thank you so much for playing a very integral part in Willie A. Watkins Journal Home. Can we bless God for Keisha and Justin? Thank you so much. And we have more acknowledgments we want to do from Greg as it relates to the memorial plaques. I was trying to get out of working so hard. We have a memorial blanket that we would like to present to you from us to you as a token of our love and our appreciation. Yes, and we'd like to present this to you from us to you. And we appreciate you. We thank God for you. And we have another one that's on the stand over here. And something just spoke to me. And I mean it just spoke to me. Because I was planning on giving it to Justin right now. But Justin, I'm going to get you one. Okay? But his grandmother's here. He says, Big Mama. And they told me Big Mama's 94 years old. 94 years old. And she'll be 95 on the 14th of March. Big Mama, we have yours hanging over here, but I tell you what, we don't have yours hanging over. I'm gonna give you Keisha's, and Keisha's hanging over there. We love you, man, we appreciate you. We thank God for you. Yes, yes. And what we're gonna do is that we'll make sure that Keisha get that one, and Justin will get you one. You okay with that? I want you fussing later, we'll get you one. We got you. We have a plaque that we'd like to present to you, from us to you, as a token of our love and our appreciation. And we thank you, Ms. Keisha. We appreciate you. We're getting you all kinds of gifts today. And Justin, of course, you know we love you. We put up with Justin. Justin bounced around like hot popcorn all the time. So we put up with him. I don't know where he got his energy from, but we appreciate you, and we love you, and we thank you so much for your service to us. We thank you. We thank you. Yes. And at this moment, we would do the remove another spray. Yes, and before we leave out, I do want to acknowledge Pastor Ford, Prophetess A.R. Gerald, we appreciate you, Bishop Glover, and First Lady Evangelist Mother Glover, we appreciate you. We got um, Pastor Sexton back here, Debbie, say Aunt Debbie, but Pastor, we're going to respect you, and at this time, we're going to prepare ourselves to leave out 
but we're going to do the committal when we get outside, and we're going to release the doves right here. So when we get outside, we're going to do our committal right there before we load him into the hearse for his final ride to Canton. So we ask that if you're not family members, if you don't mind, if you will stand this time and get his family a clap that we, this clap mean that we'll standing with them. So if you're not the family standing, we want to clap and let them know we're standing with them. So we appreciate you all. We thank God for you. Yes, 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 yes. As we prepare to leave out. 